Good morning church. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe Shairo. Amen. Hey Shairo nasikiaga ni watu wa ha ha. Bona. Aha. That's it. I was missing that. When the young church was here, we were having it. Uh, for the visitors as you have heard, I'm Rosemary Kamau. And I love Jesus Christ as my personal savior. First and foremost, I want to thank uh, our God for giving me a chance to come and even minister to you. Second, I want to thank uh, our bishop in absentia and our mom, Pastor Alice, for allowing me to come and minister together with the pastoral team of Shiro and the ministry team of Shiro Worship Center. Bwana Jesu asifiwe. Amen. Uh, I am married to one and only Mr. Kamau, who is not with me here. And he sent his love, his greetings to you. He is right now preaching in Trokana at a church known as Elim Church, a Pentecostal Elim Church in Trokana. Receive his greetings. Amen. I belong to a great family. That's what we call ourselves. And none of my great family members are around. One of them is in the farthest end. He's in Malawi, that is the youngest, spreading the word of God. The firstborn is in Kahuya Girls, preaching the word of God. Amen. Pastor Harris has said a big amen because that was that's her former school. So that she's an alumni of Kahuya Girls. And I want to thank God for this chance. As you have heard, I belong to the Cornerstone School Board. And we work together with the teachers. And we work together with Bishop. We work together with the parents. And I'm so happy that this morning, as I speak the word of God, that the parents are here. There are some students that are seated. And I'm glad that they are going to Get that which the Lord has prepared for us. And I want to say this. Every time when God gathers his people, there is always a reason. He does not gather his people in vain. He, does, he did not like, for example, this morning, t you know, take me all the way. I also stay one of the farthest end of Zimmerman. The farthest end. And I woke up at around 5 for me to be here early. Actually, I, was very, I came very early so that I, I also have time to relax and feel good. And I'm glad that you people, you also came because you knew there is something that the Lord wants to speak to us. Uh, I want to speak about hindrances of our spiritual growth. Hindrances of our spiritual growth. And when I'm talking about growth, I know most of us, uh, you know what growth is. And I would say growth is actually defined as an irreversible, constant increase in size. That is growth. Growth is referred to physical and biological changes. And in short, I can say it's increase for the teachers who are here. Increase in mass and size of body organs. I know teachers will agree with me when we are talking about growth. There is the increase. And this morning, uh, we know that there are, there are many things that can hinder our physical growth. And when I'm talking about growth, I was looking, observing, you know, a teacher... You always see and learn something. I was observing the young church when they were singing. And they started when some were not on the stage. And as they, con we, they continued praising God, eh, those young ones, they realized, oh, I'm late. And they came running. They came running and they got in. Now, the no more praise and worship here. 
When everybody is on stage, Tamara, you cannot come running and join the team here. True or not true? Why? She has grown. There is growth. I'm not saying what they did is wrong, but there is every growth, there is some stage. There is stage of growth. I also observed when we were singing and feeling good and shouting, there is one who was feeling like head, shoulder, knees and toe, knees and toe. And I'm like, wow. They are feeling so nice. They are at, in their father's house. But as much as we are dancing and singing our own song, that child is feeling good. It's head so, and knees and toes. But after some time, that child, when she is on stage, she will not be singing head, shoulder, and knees and toes. Because she will have grown. If I look at the juniors, they started when they were very small, but they have grown, and they are still growing. And when we think of Cornerstone, Walim has just told us when the school started, we didn't have many classes. By then I was not here. But from that, those years, we have seen growth of Cornerstone. We have seen growth in church. That's why we have Shiro. And we have the main campus because there is growth even in the spiritual realms. And there is also growth when we are talking about physical. Those young ones, they are going to grow and soon and very soon they will be seated where you are seated. I also observed another one. Teachers, goodness, they have to observe. Like now I'm really observing all of you. And I can tell exactly what some of you are thinking. <laughs> Those are psychologists. I observed another one. I think this child looked at the congregation and saw the mother. And she did. <laughs> she was very excited to see the mother in church. Yes. But after some time, when she will be on stage... Sangura, when she, you are on stage, even if you see your mom there, you okay. But you will not even raise the hand. I say, hey, mom. No. Because you have grown. We are saying when we grow, there are things, there is some changes that take in our lives. But there are things that hinder our growth as believers. There are things that hinder our growth. And I don't think there is any parent here who would like to give birth today? And then you're observing your child one year, two years, and there's no growth. The teachers who are here, you want the students that you're teaching today, they're in grade one. You want next year for them to be in grade two. You want them to be grade four, all the way to the university. And there's an excitement of every teacher when you see your students growing. Personally, I meet with most of my students in the streets of Nairobi. For, the, for those ones who didn't know, I'm a teacher. I've been a teacher for, the, for three decades. Yes. And when I meet with my students, I feel good because... I normally see they have grown. Sometimes they kind of remind me, hey, Mrs. Kamau, you can't remember. I'm Cynthia. But hardly do I forget because most of them, any, the way they pass through your hands, you kind of get an attachment with them. And we are saying in the book, uh, let's start uh, because I'm seeing time is going, but it's, this is still part of my message. It was still introduction. The book of Second. Peter, Second Peter, please, uh, verse 18. <clears throat> Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rather, we must grow in Grace and in knowledge. And here, Peter is not talking about the physical growth. 
But he is talking about the spiritual growth. And I want to give an illustration uh, in the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7, uh, we will read from verse 5 up to 10. And this is just, it will be just an introduction. Chased the Israelites from the city or from the town, get as uh, far as the quarries, and they killed about 36 who were retreating back or retreating down the slope. The Israelites were paralyzed with fear at the turn of events and their courage melted away. I want to mark that. The Israelites were paralyzed with fear. Imagine, fear can make you not to grow. With fear at the turn, at this turn of events, and their courage melted. They had a lot of courage, but it melted away. Those were the children of Israel. I don't want to read the other verses because I have quite a number of verses. But I want to say this. Why were the children of Israel melting with fear? Why was their courage melting away? In the book of Joshua, I've read chapter 7 and chapter 8. We have a man. The children of Israel, after they got the victory from Jericho, when the walls of Jericho fell down. Remember, Joshua was there now to continue taking the children of Israel to Canaan land. That is after the death of Moses. And there were so many cities that he was supposed to conquer. So after conquering Jericho, the next city that he was supposed to conquer was known as Ai. I'm an Ai, depending on you are an English teacher. Ai. There was this very small city. So what did Joshua do? Joshua sent some men to go and check about how I was. And when the men went there, they looked at that city and they said, they brought back the report and said, ah, Joshua, this is a very small city. You don't even need to set so many soldier, uh, soldiers or army. Only a few men. And this city is going to be down. And for sure, Joshua sent the soldiers. And when they went there, I'm telling you the Israelites, they were beaten. And that's why the Bible says that 36 of them, they died. They were killed. And when they were killed, the Israelites, they retreated back. And when they retreated back, they went and took the report to Joshua. And Joshua was really down and he could not understand why were they beaten like this. So what did he do? He went down for a whole day. He, was, he bent down with his elders and he was sorrowful. He was crying. And why was he crying? Because of the way the Israelites were beaten. Then God came and called him and he asked him, Joshua, why are you, your face down? And he told God because of the way the Israelites were beaten. And then Joshua was given some instructions by God. And he was told, because you'd never consulted me. You didn't consult me as you sent the men. So one of the hindrances of growth, if you don't pray, and actually I want to, I'll talk about three points. Three. And then I'll be done. So, the first thing is, is, in Israel's case, first failure was disobedience. There was disobedience. And why was there disobedience? Why were they beaten? Go to Joshua, go to the camp of every tribe, and you will know, you will see, I'm paraphrasing, you will see and know why I made you to be killed. And when they went, they realized there was a man known as Achan. And Achan had seen some goody goodies, spoils from Babylon. Very expensive material, 
very expensive garment. He looked at it. The Bible says he looked at it. And after looking, he desired it. After desiring, he took it. When he took them, and God had told them, they should not take anything after the destruction of, Jer of Jericho. They went and hid it in his house or his tent. By then they were living in tents. So God said, you have sinned. You have disobeyed. Imagine one person sinned. But God said, Israel, you have sinned. So Israel case, we are saying the first failure was disobedient because Achan, Achan took the spoils from Jericho. Remember, only one man disobeyed the command, but God said, you have sinned. So one person belonging to Christ cannot sin without weakening the whole body of Jesus Christ. So when one person sins, he weakens the whole body. And sometimes we normally say uh, to ourselves, when we are tempted, it, is not, it does not matter, uh, it is them. And you keep on pointing of other people. But I want to say this morning that when one person sins, it affects even his family. Achan was killed with his family, with his goats, with his cattle. And they were all buried. So when there is sin, which will make us not to grow, your family is affected. Your marriage is affected. Your parenting is affected. Your school is affected. So you cannot say, this is about me. Achan thought it was about himself, and that's why he only head and thought nobody had seen for sure nobody had seen only his family members so when you sin just know even your family is affected you as a parent when there is something that is not going on that is not right in your family and maybe you don't you forget about your children in school and you say they, i don't care they are just small I want to tell you, they are normally affected. Their education is affected. Their growth is affected. So what are we saying? Sin can make us not to grow. Disobedience can make us not to grow. It can disobeyed. May God help each one of us that we don't disobey. Thinking it's only about ourselves. But I want to say it's about God so that we are not, we don't affect the church of Jesus Christ. Number two, I said I will talk about three things. Number two, something that can make us not to grow. When we see, when we neglect prayer, when we neglect prayer, Joshua, when Joshua sent the men, he had not prayed. He did not consult God. He thought just what the victory they got in Jericho, forgetting that the victory they got, it's because, not because the Israelites knew how to fight. And actually they were not fighters. No. Not that they had very nice and, you know, sophisticated instruments and guns. No. But they won or they got the victory over the walls of Jericho because uh, God gave them victory. So they forgot that. So Joshua just sent the men without consulting God. But later he realized, hey, I need to pray. That's why the whole day he was praying. So if we neglect prayer, we'll find ourselves not growing. We need to consult God before we do anything in life. Before you send your ch uh, children to school. You need to pray. Parents, in the morning, pray for your children. Of late, you know, the many things that are happening around. You keep on hearing children. And you go to the social media and you are like, missing child. Missing child. Missing child. Why are we having missing child? Let's pray. Let's pray for them. And especially 
in the days that we are living, we have now what is happening, the storms that are around, but all the same, God will, will still find peace in the, in the midst of the storms. God will still come and he will give us victory. So, pray for your child. As a church, I thank God that we are in 21 days prayer. So, I can say in this year, I care, we have not neglected prayer. Let's keep on praying. Let's ask God to guide us. Let's ask God to give us direction as we pray. When Joshua prayed, he was given a very good plan. He was given a very good plan. And I'm not reading those verses, but you can read on your own. I'm saying this because I've read. He was given a good plan. And he was told by God how to attack I. And he was told to divide even the men. And they went during the night. They went to Ai during the night. And they went and hid around the city of Ai. And after hiding, then he was told, let the other soldiers, and that time he explained to them, let the other soldiers, you go and now attack Ai and make sure you lead. Then after that you give a signal to the ones that have been at the end, who are already hiding. And then they will ambush the eye. Then they will burn. And that city will be destroyed. That was the tactic after God giving him uh, you know, instruction on how to pray. So after prayer, so he went, the men went, and they attacked I. And they, he, he was told, after some time, you start retreating. You just turn back. You pretend that you are running away from them. And they went. And they started running away. And the soldiers of I, they knew, wow, we are now winning. So what did they do? They left I deserted. They left their city unguarded. There was no one in the city. So they turned their back. And they started running you know, after the enemy. Then Joshua gave a signal to his soldiers. And immediately they came from the ambush and they attacked Ai. Then after that, what happened? They burned Ai down. So the soldiers, they just had the frames. So they turned back. They saw their city in frames. Now there were soldiers at the front. They were nowhere to go. So what happened? They were killed. By the Israelites. Meaning what? That when we neglect prayer, we can be attacked. But when we tell God, God will always give you a strategy. God gave Joshua a strategy because he prayed. But he prayed later. Let us not pray later. So God is very merciful. Even when we miss and we go to him in prayer, Imagine he forgives us. He forgives us. He did not say, Joshua, now to hell with you. No. But God gave him victory together with the rest of the Israelites. So he talked to God and he told God all that he wanted so that he could be able to avoid the mistake that he had done before. We can also avoid mistakes by telling God, by praying. Hmm? The time we need to pray. When we say it is, this is the time for prayer, let's wake up. Let's commit the day to the Lord. Let's tell God about our day. As we walk, don't say that you only pray because you are driving or you are going to be carried by a matatu. We need to pray always so that when we pray, then God will come and give us victory. The other thing is, the cause of Israel's defeat was self-confidence. They had self-confidence and they were also very lazy. Do you have boys and girls here? That sometimes we are overconfident when we go to do our exams. You imagine this exam is just like the other Mr. Odero gave us. So you don't want to study. I want to encourage you, boys and girls, you need 
to study. Don't be lazy. If you want to grow your marks, if you want to grow as a teacher, you need to have a, go with a lot of confidence before God. You don't have to be lazy. For a teacher, if you want to grow, you can move from this grade to the other. You go back to school and learn. There is nothing wrong in going back to school. Some of us, they say, Ah, oh, I'm so old. I'm so old. Go back to school. Go back to school. That is growth. You keep on growing. So the Israelites, they were overconfident. They were like, so the men, they had a, a time to attack, but they thought, uh, this is just like the other, the way we did in Jericho. They were overconfident, and they were a bit lazy. So they, would, they didn't care. They thought that Jericho's victory was a testimony to them. And they thought this is, we are going to win this battle again. But that was not the case. They were defeated just because there was sin in their midst. May God help each one of us that we may not get our defeat. We may not be defeated because we walk saying, I read the Bible every day so I cannot be attacked by the enemy. And by the way, at your saying, how did you fall? Tell me. Oh, you didn't read the Bible in the morning. That is somebody who is, you, have, you, have, you know, self-confident. You feel like you are overconfident. That those people who fall, they are sinners. As a believer, you just need to tell God in prayer, Lord, I need you. We need to tell God. We need to have our captain, who is Jesus Christ. The Israelites, they had Joshua. We have Jesus Christ as our captain. We need him in our lives. We have our small, you know, our small towns, I in us. And those eyes, they need to be destroyed. We need to bring them down. We need some, we, ha we have Achans in ourselves. And Achan needs to be destroyed so that he does not pull us back by what he did. When you have the mentality of Achan, you'll find yourself, you just see, then you desire. Some Bibles, they talk of coveting. And remember, that's against the commandment. You should not covet. So, Achan coveted. And after coveting, he took. May God help us that we don't covet. Let's find, let's use our eyes. I know some of us will say, Ah, I was tempted. Fine. You can be tempted, but don't yield to sin. Don't yield to temptation. Look at, you see with your eyes, but then don't go to the next step of desiring. I wish I have. I wish I have. The young boys and girls in school, sometimes they, they, saw, they normally see even pencils, they see rubbers, they see books. And they keep on picking from others. Remember, boys and girls, still that is sin. Remember, sin is all the bad things we do. Even disob disobeying the teacher. Boys and girls, I hope you are listening to me. Are you listening? We are saying sin is all the bad things we do. And all the bad things I said, including picking people's pencils in class without permission. Desiring them and picking them. Those sharpeners, they may look to be very small. Like that city of I. Eh? A, pie, eh? a pencil. Just a small pencil. I took it. And then you, you want to justify that. Please don't pick. If you don't have, to talk to your teacher. Excuse me, Mr. Odero. Teacher Bedinego, I don't have a pencil. Can there, or Teacher Salome, can, is there anyone who can help Teacher will help you. Don't pick anybody's pencil. Don't take, pick anybody's book. And because you don't have that book and you want it, please don't take it. Remember, we have talked of those three things. I hope you have got them right. Boys and girls, have you got them right? 
You see, the, the teacher is here and has to keep on asking questions so that you will know whether you have gotten that. Remember we said Israel case, the first thing was the failure of disobedience. And we said, number two, neglect. If we neglect prayer, we'll find ourselves not growing. And the last one was the self-confidence and laziness. That goes together. Self-confidence and laziness. And if you want to grow, we want to tell God, God help us in our growth. And when God comes in our growth, you will find you will not sin. Because when sin is found among the body of Jesus Christ, remember, it affects everyone. If we don't pray, it affects everyone. The list is addressed because you can add that even not reading the Bible can make us not to grow. If you are not consistent in serving God or being committed to God can make you also not to grow. Because if you want to grow, you need to have all those things aligned together. You need to have all those things aligned together. I know I said there are many scriptures and I want to read Joshua because I'm finishing. Uh, Joshua chapter 8, what it was verse 27 to 28. Joshua chapter 8. The Bible says, only the livestock and the treasures of the town were not destroyed. For the Israelites kept those as plunder for themselves as the Lord had commanded Joshua. 28. So Joshua burnt the city of Ai and it became a permanent mode of ruins, desolate to this day. The same things that God had said don't take. God again now has said, bless them. Now you can take. So it is very, very important when we pray. You listen to the instructions that God gives us. Don't say, we normally do this in our church. All at home, we normally do this. It's okay. But now, the Bible again now comes and says, you can take this now. When now the Bible is saying you can take, then meaning you have now all the peace of taking what God wanted you to take. And I want to say this. The enemy who makes us not to grow, he is roaring like a lion, looking for someone to default, looking for someone that he can snatch. And we as believers, as the soldiers of Christ, the Bible is telling us, do what? Let's put, up, put on the whole armor of the Lord. Let's not put the, the armor down. The moment we put our armor down, the enemy will attack us. And we will not grow. We want to grow. We want to grow spiritually. As parents who are here, you want your children to grow spiritually. But you need also, as a parent, to grow so that you can also help your child in growth. Every parent and every farmer, you always like to see, when you plant something, you want to see the growth. And there is a lot of excitement when you, you are harvesting. There is a lot of excitement when you are calling people, come, I share with you my harvest. There is a lot of joy. There is a lot of joy. Even us, when I think of Cornerstone, and we are seeing the young church praising God, what does that one mean to us? Me as a member of the school board, I feel good because we pray for our students. We pray for our teachers. Meaning, there is growth that is taking place in Cornerstone. 
We did have junior high school. Now we have junior. That one gives a lot of pride in us, even as teachers, as the members of our church. When we see that growth and we tell God, thank you that you are fighting this battle for us. And you may be here. And when we are talking growth, you are wondering, what kind of growth are you talking about? And you are saying, me, I have grown, and there is no way I'm going to go down. But you know, you can reach a place, and you are just stagnant. You're just going round and round. You are not moving. But we want to see growth. We want to see things that will help us to, uh, for others to emulate. And then they say, yes. For sure, these people have grown. Our commitment, remember, even to the church, is part of growth. And you know, the worst of all, the worst of all, fear of growth. That's the worst. Fear of growth. Then you just fear. that I, Will I grow? If I get saved, will I grow? And you are there and you are wondering, ah, uh, I don't think I need to get saved. Because already you are fearing. <laughs> you are fearing that you are going to, to grow. Fear of growth is the worst. When you are busy with other things, uh, you are so busy, but you still have the fear whether you are going to grow. Let's depend on God. By the way, growth will not Come when you are depending on your strength. You need to depend on God. You need to depend on God. You need to depend on God's strength for you to grow. Hmm? You need to keep away what we call distractors. Distractors can also make you not to grow. The moment you see someone doing something and you don't know what they are doing, you just want to follow them. And they distract you from the way that God has called you. May God help each one of us. And I want to pray. Now, but to see mommy. Let's, let's stand up. We want to tell God to help us that he may remove from us all the hindrances that can make us not to grow. That can make us not to go ahead with what God has called us to do. I know and we desire that all of us would like to grow spiritually. You'd like to grow in prayer. You'd like to be consulting God in every moment of your life. But there are times you are like, Lily, I'm busy. Very, very busy. I don't even have time even to pray. Just pray for yourself and as we pray. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless your name, our Father. We pray that God this morning, you've reminded us that, Lord, we need to grow spiritually, oh God. Yes, there are things that hinder us, our Father, in our busy schedules, oh God. We pray that God of glory, you are going to remember us, our Father. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, may you hear the cry of our hearts, our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we pray that God, we may remove from us the echoes, our Father, those small cities in our hearts that can make us not to grow. In the name of Jesus, destroy them for us, Holy Spirit of God. Destroy the eyes in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship your name. We give you glory and we give you the honor. Oh, Father, we thank you. I want to give this chance. If there is anyone among us, you have not known the Lord, and you are wondering what we are talking about, the growth, I want to give you a chance. Just raise your hand and then we are going to pray together. We will commit you to the Lord. Anyone in our midst, you've not yet come in contact with God, you've not given your life to Christ, do we have anyone? Just raise your hand and we will see it. This is a time that we don't like lashing because 
at such an awesome moment before the Lord. Do we have anyone? Okay, if they are risen, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you. We bless your name, O God. Father, thank you for speaking to us this morning. It's our prayer and desire that God of glory, you may help us to grow in you, Jesus. Our Father, we pray that you destroy in us the acorns that may be in our hearts, our Father. The small eyes that are in our hearts, O God, that can make us, dear Lord, not to grow in you, O Jehovah God. Father, we want to thank you that Jehovah, you will destroy anything, any relationship, our Father, that can make us not to grow our Father. Oh, my Father, I pray that God of glory, those things that we may hear in our hearts, our Father, that they make us, our Father, to be indifferent with you, oh Jesus. We pray that, Lord, you forgive us in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, our Father, this morning. Forgive us as a church, oh dear Master, that we may grow. Forgive us as a nation, dear Lord, that we may grow, Jehovah God. How we pray that my Father and my God, we know that, Lord, when you forgive us, we can grow in you, Jesus Christ, our Father. We can grow from one glory to the other because that is your word, Jesus Christ. Father, we worship your name. We give you glory, our Father, and we give you the honor, dear Lord. How we pray that, God of glory, you make us, our Father, to be instruments of you, Jesus Christ, our Father, that you use us our father even after growth in the name of Jesus we want to bless your name our father we want to thank you for cornerstone dear lord we want to thank you lord our father for the growth we have seen our father in numbers our father we want to thank you for the spiritual growth we have seen in our students our father and the teachers our lord and even the cornerstone fraternity we want to say thank you king of glory we want to bless them this morning in the name of jesus have your way our father have your way, Jesus Christ, our King. We love you, Lord, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. God bless you.